Welcome to Nuked Radio. This is episode 51. Today is Tuesday, July 24th, 2012. I am your host, Christina Consolo, and with me today is Jules. Hey, Jules. Hello. How are you? Good. I forgot to tell you before we went on air, I have some very special news to share. The main Facebook page that I have, the Rad Chick page, reached a million people in the past few days. So only 349 million left to go. Well, that's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Couldn't do it without people sharing our posts. I had a great conversation with Dr. Bill Deagle again yesterday on his show that I will be uploading later today. I'll be returning to his show on August the 6th. But what I was so excited about during this interview is he finally answered the question, I've asked pretty much every guest that I've had on, including Jim Walsh, if the sun activity, since it's changing decay rates in isotopes in the lab, as reported by Purdue University in 2010 and Stanford in 2011, could it also be affecting the material inside reactors? And he said yes, and he explained how that's happening. And he also added that these sun events can be contributing to metal fatigue, which happens already just from normal wear and tear on the reactors so i will upload that video later now today we have a very special guest bug from believers underground and i see him just coming on to skype now so we'll see if we can get him on there's a few other news items that i wanted to hit before we talk to him, Miss Milky the Clown has changed her channel. You can find her on YouTube now as Miss Milky the Clown 1. And you must see her latest video that she came out with yesterday called Fukushima, the final report, what went wrong, everything, update 72312. I'll drop a link into chat for you guys. And I believe we have Scott on the line. Scott, are you there? Yes, I am. What's up, kids? Good morning to you. I'm so glad that you're here. Yeah, I'm here, man. I, I had to do some stuff this morning and stuff. I was going to take off again. I didn't know it was this early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was like afternoon stuff or evening stuff. I don't know. I do so many radio shows, so it's, it's mind-blowing. It's it's even early for me, yeah. And uh, I'm on uh, East Coast time. Uh, most of you guys know Bug from Believers Underground. He's most widely known for his theory of post-glacial rebound, which was proved as fact when NASA yep. reported the ocean floor was sinking. Yep. Uh, news listening, man. I mean, you know, I was just watching this thing on uh, uh, in Washington. They're doing this pot initiative, you know, where they want to put legalized pot and everything. I'm going like it, they took one of the guys from one of these insurance companies, Progressive Insurance, donated one point three million dollars to this effort, man. And I'm going like. Man, that place is getting hammered with radiation. And, you know, yeah, they better have some, you know, cancer pot or whatever, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'm just sitting there going, holy smokes, man, another smoking mirror. They're going to get them all going over that, you know, whether, you know, that, you know, whether people want to smoke or not, man, that's whatever. But, man, we got nuclear problems, man, big time. And I walked to Washington. Man, Hanford works as a nuclear nightmare. Uh, uh, I mean, it's it's pathetic, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> well, we, we need every, you know, every tool we can get in our arsenal to deal with this in terms of mitigation. And, and you know, we have 20,000 research studies from Europe showing how beneficial cannabis is for um, uh, multiple conditions, 126 conditions that have been scientifically proven. Uh, one of those, uh, the protective benefits of the effects of radiation on health. Um, I have noticed also recently that uh, Senator Stabenow from Michigan and Senator Wyden from Oregon is really trying to push through this uh, hemp initiative. And, you know, we could be using planting hemp everywhere to help decontaminate our farmlands. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I brought that to the table God, a year and a half ago or so. You know, you, you can create above ground forest overnight with that stuff. You know, and that will handle the, the mass flooding. You know, it, it can mitigate uh, uh, a lot of climate issues, you know, by just 
planning out. That stuff grows like crazy, and it doesn't get you high nothing, you know. The, the With the, the GMO pots, you know, I'm not really cool with those, you know. Who knows what the heck they're doing with that. They're doing the same thing with the foods, you know. If you're going to do it, do it naturally. That's That's my word of advice on it and uh, as far as this initiative they should be stating that this will help with cancer from the nuclear radiation coming from fukushima you know that that would be more helpful for for our efforts to, to get that information out on how toxic this nuclear waste is and i've been talking from day one on that stupid nuclear garbage man they powder keg this whole planet with nuclear fallout i got i mean some of my early bids from years and years ago just have just stacked with links in it i mean because i packed out my bids with the links i mean they have been dumping this stuff in the oceans for decades upon decades. They've been doing feminology testing, which is high-altitude nuclear testing. I mean, this is insanity. Uh, all the, the over 2,000 nuclear bomb tests. Man, these boys with toys. And now you got 440 nuclear reactors around the planet, and they're all at risk from post-glacial rebound effect. And it's fact. They need to shut them down. I mean, heck, you got thorium energy that they could have went to instead of this other stuff and that uses a liquid reactor it, it the possibilities of it ever melting down are like nothing okay and they're using the solid fuel rods i'm going like holy smokes man if you're going to go nuclear at least go with thorium and you won't have the meltdowns i mean we can't afford the meltdown it's going to kill the oceans it's already killing the oceans heck i was just out on the coast taking readings i mean it it's pathetic it's sad man i i mean i just shake my head <laughs> are you still eating fish do you feel oh, that's a threat? I know Arnie Gunderson had said if you still want to eat fish, this is the year to do it because next year it'll be too radioactive. But after that came the Stanford reports on the tuna well, fish. Yeah, one of my friends, uh, Dean Popop, he's down there in Texas. One of his buddies uh, set up a, a huge fish growing operation indoors. And it could produce up to, I, I think it was 50 tons of fish, uh, you know, a cycle. So, you know, there's alternative fish that you can eat that is being grown, you know, and they're going to have to go to those type of techniques if you want to eat fish. Absolutely. I, I, mean, I, I don't see the ocean doing any better, do you? <laughs> oh, no. And, and from what I know and you know about uh, bioaccumulation, this isn't going to get better anytime soon. This is going to get worse and worse. And I'm already really surprised that it was detected this early to the levels that it has been oh yeah i mean it's it's i mean it's a domino man it, that's why i put out that one video from uh the uh japan's uh, national defense uh, ministry uh, where it said vitamin c and and all these other vitamins they're giving it to these workers and everything else and this should be going out to everybody you know to protect from dna breakdown as the man's sperm rates have dropped 75% since 1925. And this is all nuclear. It is causing sterility. And, you know, that's part of Agenda 21. You know, I, I just read the L.A. Times this weekend, and they said that birth rates around the world are falling, and they're falling hard. And I'm just going, yeah, you know, and then they put that little caveat. Oh, but there's people, you know, then in this age group, you know, that, that can have kids and stuff. As I sit down listening to the World Bank talk down in Mexico, oh, world populations are going to be up to this by this year. That's a flat line. The climate's going to take out billions. And that was came out through uh, MIT. They said we're going to lose 3.5 billion people because of the climate. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in just a moment with more from Bug. And welcome back. Yeah, if you're subscribed to Bug on YouTube or you've heard any of his interviews or his radio show, then you know he cares greatly about people and humanity. And he has a wonderful way of getting his message across and helping us understand why we should be concerned about these things that he's talking about. He covers a multitude of topics such as earthquakes, 
ice pack melt, nuke plants, Fukushima. He teaches them and explains them in a way that even a six-year-old can understand them, which was a, a big inspiration to me when I started trying to teach people about radiation. Bug, what are your biggest concerns right now about the status of the Fukushima plant? Well, uh, I mean, they're, uh, it's, it's going to destroy the ocean, man. I mean, you've had, what, two gigatons of water already pumped through those reactors and back out into the ocean. You know, you're talking two billion tons of water. This is radioactive water, and they they can't stop it. You know, they're they're looking at, what, 500, day 500? Yeah. And, and there's no end in sight. You know, there is none. They, they, how are they going to stop it, man? This stuff's burning hot as the sun. Hey, what are they going to do? Scoop it up in their hand and throw it in a wastebasket or something? It doesn't work that way. You know, nuclear power is a Pandora's box, and once they open it, they, it once they can't, they don't, once they have a meltdown, they can't shut it off. You know, I mean, you look at Chernobyl's waste; it's still hot, and and the, they're having to redome that whole thing in. And this one, this is way worse because it's sitting right off the ocean. And I was warning Japan hardcore for 15 months that a major earthquake was coming. Heck, the coast started sinking three days beforehand. They were already having a problem in their underground nuclear facility. And I put the put the links on my backup channel to their underground nuclear facilities, and they have one out there by San Onofre. They got one up in uh, uh, South Dakota, uh, program Dussel. You know, they got these accelerators all over the place. And I'm going, these are nuclear accelerators. It was part of their Earthshield project because they know that they got a major breach in the magnetic field, and they do, you know, with the earth has slowed down 24 seconds since 1972. You've got the Landsat celebrating, oh, their 40th anniversary, you know, that's 1972. You've had them numbering and tagging all the animals globally since 1972. You know, this, they know they got serious earth problems and you're seeing, you know, the money go. And, and it's taking off. Right after Chernobyl, man, I mean, uh, it was like white flight, man, it back in the 60s in, in uh, uh, Los Angeles, man. All the money booked. And, and then everybody that was left over was left over, man. And I was one of them. Yay! <laughs> Born and raised in East L.A. Heck, I even lived in South Central L.A., 42nd and Avalon. Heart of Crips territory, you know. No problemos, baby. You know, these people are getting hammered with, uh, you look at the radiation. The the problems is right there with the money. You know, uh, RT, I think, released a, a, a thing yet this morning. Uh, I have all the links. You know, I, I, I put it like, 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 like. So you can just go over to my channel after the show and you find all those links uh, under like and listen to them to yourself. They got over $21 trillion to $33 trillion hidden in offshore bank accounts. And that's people here in the United States. I mean, these rich bastards, could they could take out nuclear power anytime they want. With that kind of money, heck, they could pay off the debt, which they created anyway through their Ponzi schemes of the credit default insurance market, the over-the-counter derivatives, and all these other frauds that's going on right now. And, and nuclear, holy smokes, that stuff is do you, could, do you think any arrests are going to happen with this LIBOR scandal or any of these offshore account things? Do you really think we're going to see anything as far as that goes? Because I know you follow the, the money stuff and the economy and politics. A lot more than I do. And you're able well, they they all go hand in hand. You know, they're all interconnected. You got to follow the money. You know, and, and, you know it's it's pathetic. I, I sit there going, "Holy smokes, man! They are ripping off everybody globally with this major Ponzi scheme." And I mean, I even got a guy from the House of Commons. He comes out point blank and says, "All off books transactions are illegal." That means that whole over-the-counter derivatives market is illegal. And the only reason 
why we don't have alternative energies because they have H3O technology, they got uh, osmotic uh, technology, they got thorium technology, they got all kinds of different technologies that they could switch over to, you know, other than this toxic stuff that we're using. It, it, but that's a part of their agenda. You know, I guess once they get their their numbers down enough because you got two sets of people in the world bank see they 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 run both sides against the middle now the world bank runs the planet okay they got the whole planet tied up in trade agreements they all signed into climate security laws okay back in 09 i know i was taking on the icpp or iccps because you know, i just want to get them in there but whatever, you know, the <laughs> But uh, anyhow, you know, they're they're running it all. It's all being run out of Geneva, Switzerland. Your your World Agricultural uh, Committee, you know, your Codex Alimentarius, which is foodie radiation, and you can look it up on Wikipedia. I got a video from geez, oh, three years ago. You know, this nuclear waste falls on the field, and it starts to go down one centimeter a year. It's already in the food supply, you know, and I'm going, oh, it smokes. And they started that Codex Elementarius in, what, 62 or 64. But they already had so many atomic bomb testings. And, and, and you just think about Japan getting nuked back in the 40s. I mean, all that infrastructure, people, all, it all was radiation. You know, it was all radioactive. And it went all over your ice packs. You know, I came on uh, YouTube because I didn't do YouTube, you know. <laughs> but uh, when I came on, because I needed a medium, I, I needed to get this out there. And, and it wasn't going to come from the money. It, it ain't going to happen. Uh -huh. And when you and when you see $21 trillion being hidden in offshore accounts, okay, then you know it's never going to happen. It, that's their game. It's uh, uh, incorporation. It is a religion. And it's a false religion. And everybody's practicing it. You know, back in 1917, when they gave legal rights of a person to a piece of paper, it became a demagogue. It, it's alive. I mean, you could have gave a toilet seat to life. I mean, it's, it's moronic as heck. And this is what they're hiding behind. Mr. TEPCO, okay? Mr. BP. Mr. GE. See, that paper has the legal rights of a person. You call it Mr. Okay. Yeah. And when they take AIG, all right, and they said it was too big to fail, by legal definition, it made it a legal living power greater than ourselves, an idol. And everybody got ripped off for 416 bucks, 320,000 or million American through alms to the beast of incorporation. And they're not putting any safeguards in it, nothing. So you think you're going to get justice for these folks? Uh-uh. They're pushing, you know, as I see this, like, mini riot happen down there in uh, uh, Orange County. Heck, I may go over there. But, uh, you know, as the cops are shooting this kid for running, first off, they have no right to shoot him, period. Okay? They're, they're protecting the police, and they're getting hammered with radiation, too. Okay? So, I, you know, we have to bring that knowledge to pull them out of it. They are supporting idolatry. You're talking about Anaheim and uh, the gentleman that was uh, shot in the back as he was running away unarmed? Yeah. You know, you need probable cause, man. They didn't have no probable cause. They just killed him. Flat out. You know, the first shot was in the back, and then they walked up and, and put it in his head. And welcome back. Bug responded to my Skype message the other day. When I asked him what day he wanted to come on, he said, Tuesday sounds like a good day to get nuked. But in reality, we've been in the midst of a nuclear attack since the first week of Fukushima. When the plumes began to hit our shores, Michio Kaku had reported that uranium, at least in reactor two, is now liquefied. And the temperature of uranium would have to be above 5,000 degrees for that to be true. 
So what I'm going to ask Bug when he gets back is what he thinks the Corium's doing. And you guys that listen to the show know that I ask everybody that. And we also want to have him explain to us the difference between earthquakes out in California and earthquakes along the New Madrid. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, I'll, I can I can hammer out that. I only caught the last part. Um, uh, uh, did you talk about Michio Kaku the before? Yeah, yeah. I would like to get your opinion on what do you think the Corium's doing? How is it behaving underground, especially in light of that new information about it being liquefied? Well, you know, I emailed him about two weeks ago. You know, he has a YouTube channel. I got about 10,000 more subs than him. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I, I emailed him. He has still not responded back. You know, but uh, I did get with a couple other gentlemen as a result. Nevertheless, from what I'm seeing is that corium or whatever you want to call it, it it's a 100% melt is what it is. They've never had it in the history of nuclear power. They don't know what they're facing. And when I start looking at the dynamics of the earth, especially with the magnetic field, Man, you, you're looking at it. It's already self-sustaining. Salt loves uranium, okay? I put up a video years ago on, uh, and right after the Fukushima event on an SRE. That's a sodium reactor energy. You had three meltdowns here in Simi Valley, California, back in the 50s and early 60s. You know, they, you don't hear about it, but there's a YouTube right on, you know, there's a video right on YouTube on it. And, and the sodium reactor energy that Rocketdyne was using, it melted down three times. And they didn't even have a containment dome on that thing. And then they built schools and everything else nearby. I mean, I even took a train right through that area. You know, they called it the Simi Valley Nuclear Train Ride. <laughs> and then and I put that on my backup channel, Global Truth Network one. And, and then I got another video coming off the train, uh, meeting Jeff the Canuck uh, that he put on his channel. You know, uh, uh, I think it was called GMO to go, you know, because <laughs> they're both hungry. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, you know, because you got to have fun as you're doing this. I mean, it, it, the, the earth is in big distress. But nevertheless, that 100% melt that they're dealing with, and you're adding salt water to it, holy smokes, it's the worst thing you can do. Mm -hmm. It becomes self-sustaining. Uranium and salt love each other. It's a match made in heaven, and they were trying to use that liquid sodium in these reactors, okay, because they, they would never have to replace the rods. See, but they were having problems with the lubricant, and the lubricant was actually clogging up some of the pipes, which resulted in a meltdown. You know, I don't know if they've ever uh, come out with a lubricant that can fix that problem. I heard somebody mention it, and then I fronted him on it, and then he just went, went away, you know. Uh, and so I don't think they do. But nevertheless, it hates water. An SRE hates water. It causes hydrogen. And, man, they got the worst-case scenario going right now. They got 100% melt in a salt-rich environment and a water-rich environment. It's a recipe for – it's just disaster central. And when you start getting into 100% melt that's self-sustaining off the salt and you start adding all this dirt, the magnetic field problems, you're looking at a potential neutron star. You know, it, I mean, a yellow sun. Okay, that's how hot they burn. You know, it's nuclear. <laughs> it's fusion. That's what the sun is, nuclear fusion. Right. But, you know, I'm, I'm going, Wow. You know, talk about the land of the rising sun. Holy smokes, that thing blows up. They're going to actually throw a star up, and it'll go right into the ocean, man. It's like a star fell from heaven and killed a third of the oceans. Man, you got that stuff going on right here. You know, <laughs> I'm going, wow, these guys are insane, insane. You know, I, I, I from what I'm looking at, man, you might as well just kiss the Pacific Ocean goodbye. Uh, but I've been telling everyone for years they need to evacuate all these islands. And then you see all these nuclear reactors on these islands, uh, especially with Japan. I, I mean, they got underground cable wires running in the ocean all over the place. It's like a spider web out there, you know, running this power because they were selling it. And one of the, the 
people that were buying this power to run their own nuclear facility was over there in, I think it was Taiwan. And after that quake, one of those power lines broke in the ocean because the ocean sank. You know, the coast of Japan sank 13 feet within six minutes, you know, and it, just like Vanuatu has sunk 10 feet in, in Papua New Guinea and uh, Duke Earl Islands, you know, over a long period of time. So it can happen fast or it can happen slow. Same way with Alaska in 64, you know, the ocean up there rebounded, the floor of the ocean rebounded up 50 feet in minutes, uh, just like Greenland is rebounding a continent. You can put all the islands on the world and stick it on that continent and still wouldn't fill that continent up. And in that continent, a massive continent, has rebounded out of the ocean over two feet now. You know, these are major dynamics. And, you know, that water goes into these geofragile zones around the planet. It creates mega earthquakes. This is pressure and weight, loading and unloading. Uh, and that's what slowed the earth down 24 seconds. It's the ice skater principle. You know, the, the girl skates, you know, has she's spinning with her hands above her head. And once her hands start dropping to the side, she starts to slow down uh, because it's weight. It's just gravity and inertia. And that's what's happening to the earth. It's slowing down as it's widening. You know, and that's all. These are all facts, folks. <laughs> as as scary as they sound, you know, hey, man, no fear. You know, hey, just trust in God. He's got to, you know, he'll take care of these rich polluters that would not repent. He's got their number. But, uh, you know, for us, we're looking at a woman in travail, you know, and whenever I'm dealing with a pregnant woman, it's you want to help her through that pregnancy. You want to make sure the baby's delivered properly and you get her through it and comfort her. And that's the way we should be looking at this time right now. This is God's planet, you know, and, and she's getting wider. You know, and the ice is the womb of the earth. It's Book of Job. And it's melting. It's melting like a runaway. Uh, and, you know, and her tummy's expanding. You know, it's it's just a part of the dynamic. But that also causes earthquakes. Now, in the New Madrid region, that is an expansion zone. That is a 6.2-mile down zone. Okay, I call it 6.2, uh, the ruler of the underworld magma, you know, because <laughs> that's where you're going to get your, your massive earthquakes on the 6.2 line. That's that's an expansion zone, you know, six with two points or 666. You know, you, you can look at the triangles over on the volcano site. You know, they're all triangles, you know, <laughs> so it, 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 they're all part of the one of the same thing, you know, from the core all the way out to the magnetic field. When that ice moves, it creates dynamics, and and, and they're here. And it's bad enough the sun got whacked with a big old planet. Did you see that about five months ago? Holy smokes. <laughs> Threw off an X-50 flare. They had to come up with a new name. And I'm going, man, the sun got whacked. It's in big trouble. It's in big trouble. Yeah. And we, and we got local flood. It's a magnetic field. that it, It's from a couple galaxies colliding from a long time ago, but it spans across 30 light years. That's how big this anomaly is. And it's affecting our sun, too. And, and we lost our bow much. shock as well on our heliosphere a few months back. NASA reported on that. Yeah, I mean, we, we're in big trouble. It, it, these these games, holy smokes. You know, I did a video the other day on the coast, you know, and I fronted up Alex Jones, man. I go, dude, you know, the, your tech stuff and uh, the earth stuff, it's apples and oranges. It's two different things. And that ice is melting. Heck, we lost a million square miles of ice last month. I mean, wow, that's bad news for Japan. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back for our last segment. Stick around. You're listening to Bug on Nuked Radio. But I wanted to ask you, being on the West Coast, have you had any reports from your subs or your, your immediate family of your, or yourself about sickness that could be from the nuclear fallout situation? Oh, absolutely. Uh, one of my kids had a miscarriage. You know, it, it, we've been getting hammered with, with that stuff. You should see the infant mortality rates in Japan. Holy smokes. I think they were 39% the last time I looked. And that was children two and under. And people are dying from heart attack, too, over in Japan. From that Fukushima uh, area, they've had mass death through heart attacks. Why? 
because nuclear radiation affects muscle tissue in your heart's a muscle. As I was talking to a, a radio DJ yesterday, uh, Johnny B, he's a radio personality for like 20 years, you know, he, and I, I was over at his house yesterday and we were talking and he just got released from the hospital. He had a massive heart attack. And, you know, I go, dude, you got to keep up on your vitamins and stuff, you know, because I, 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 I dig the elderly, you know, and, and uh, I've known a lot of people. And, and when somebody goes down, you know, I'm, I'm going to be there, you know, so it, but it was, you know, you're going to see more death through through heart attack and that's going to affect the elderly. And then the, the radiation is going to affect the newborns. You know, you're going to start seeing sterility also. You know, it, 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 but if it does that to people, okay, then it's doing it to the animals as well. And this is what they're not getting. They are killing the biosphere. It's, they're putting a fork in it, you know. It's bad enough that stuff is, you know, you got uh, three, four layers now in the ice up there. And now that nuclear fallout is melting with the ice and going into the oceans you know it's kind of like a recycle that stuff the metal that keeps giving because the uranium's mine folks if you don't know you know it's it's not it's different from solar radiation you know that stuff is just a gift that just keeps giving you know <laughs> I, I wish we had something to neutralize it but i i don't see anything out there that can you know at this point or that they're telling us so uh, until some kind of technical breakthrough. Now, they're trying to do teleportation. Uh, you know, that's over there in the Canary Islands. Uh, they, they actually teleported something, uh, what, 100 miles across. So they're, they're already got practical application. I've, I've seen them uh, do that through Duke University and a couple other universities where they teleported stuff already. You know, but as soon as they're able to teleport a human cell, then, then they can... They, they can do the whole breakdown on teleporting people, too. But if they're able to teleport, say, some nuclear waste up to the moon, that'll work for me. <laughs> Where would you teleport to if you could? <laughs> oh, I, I don't want to teleport anywhere. I, I love this home God gave me. Uh, we should all love it and cherish it, man. Maybe are you like one Are you planning on staying on the West Coast, even if uh, Reactor 4 falls? I don't know what I do, you know. My my footsteps are of the Lord, man. You, you're not supposed to know, you know. That's why I don't make any promises or anything. I say, well, God willing, you know. Uh, I mean, he's going to, you know, lead me, guide me, and direct me wherever I need to be. He's going to fund whatever needs to be funded to do it. And, and if it doesn't happen, well, you know, I hope it happens with somebody so that message gets out i don't know i i only do what i can do that's it I, i'm maximum for everybody today and i stay maximum for love and and that's that's what makes this life worth living you know this stuff they're doing is 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 raw evil it's raw evil on the highest levels especially when mit comes out and says well we're going to lose 3.5 billion people by the year uh, 2030. They're still using 2030 numbers, which is a con also because NASA itself dropped it to 2020. And that's a report that was released out of Margaret Beckett from Washington, D.C. on climate security. And the guy from the BBC, Point Blank, he goes, you're talking about the imminent destruction of the planet. And she goes, Point Blank, says, yes. And that's the first video I uploaded on YouTube. Nobody caught it. You know, I, I, I was taping at four in the morning, uh, because I've been on C-SPAN a couple times. You know, I took on Governor Groham from Michigan. I saw that. Good job. <laughs> yeah, I'll eat her up for breakfast, man. That is garbage, man. She's in pew, man. That's a clean energy charity. Yeah, a charity, a 501c3. Yeah, incorporation. Uh-huh. You know, and, and any incorporated charity, 501c3, you know, nonprofit, all those people are a media arm for the rich. And, and nuclear was totally on her table. And, and nah, forget it. Uh -uh. I'll, I'll slap them around all I can. <laughs> nuclear is absolutely nuts. You know, if they're doing it with the technologies they're using, it is garbage. Uh, you don't start something you can't shut off. That's the definition for insanity. I mean, wow. 
a nuclear insanity. Uh, you know, it, and the same thing with these Ponzi schemes and stuff. You started seeing the money take off right after Chernobyl. Uh, it, it, you know, Reagan already had it in the works in 84, but when it got all passed out, you know, you see, it's the, the separation from the rich and the poor. Oh, there's a massive one now. And when you could take just one, like a company like Walmart, okay, they have the collective money worth of 41.9% of America combined. Okay. One family. Yep. One yep. Corporation, one entity, and that's why they're too big to fail. Yeah, no, that's a con. It's all a fraud. It's all brainwashing. It's it's garbage. Okay, we got along just fine without incorporation a hundred years ago. Okay, <laughs> it, it's a fraud, and, and it just protects them. But they already know the climate's done, and that's why when uh, when the White House put, I think it was February fourth of last year that uh, Canada and the United States merged. Oh, the Parliament was pissed up there. And you still haven't heard boo in the media about it, but you know how the media is controlled by Atlas Media. That's also out of Geneva, Switzerland. Everything's being run and controlled out of Geneva, Switzerland. The World Bank, the, the United Swiss Banks, which the all the banks on the planet signed into the Global Patriot Act certification. Okay, and that means they had to turn over all the bank accounts, numbers, and everything else to the United Swiss Banks, which is a part of your World Bank. Okay, that's your G7. Well, it's really the G194. You know, if you go over to the World Bank site, you can look at these people yourself, man. Just type in World Bank and go on over and see what they've been doing for decades upon decades. They set this thing up right after World War II. Okay, and and they've already went in for the kill. They're just licking the bones now. Uh, and as far as your voice, you have no voice. You know, in corporation, it's a power greater than yourself. Okay, a legal living power greater than yourself. That means that demagogue has more voice. You don't have a voice. And, and, and that whole thing, that whole system of frauds is coming right out of Washington, out of all these different places, man. They're, they're only, uh, how can you say, arms for the rich to make money off of you. That's all Washington, D.C. is now. You don't have a government. In 1917, when they went into when they gave life to that paper called incorporation because the U S incorporated back in, in the 1800s, but when they gave legal rights of a person to it, well, it turned it into a demigod. You know, it's a, it's a money changer thing. It's like Christ. When he went to the money changers, you know, they, they, he went, oh, you made my father's house a den of thieves, man. He started tossing the tables and whacking them with nine tails and heck, that's what we need to do. Okay. It, it, you know, it, same with those churches. Those churches, are the head are not Christ, okay? The head is the state. They're a 501c3. That is a business tool. They turn the Father's house into a business. They answer to the state. They don't answer to God. They answer to the state, okay? They're garbage. I toss all them file cabinets and <laughs> slap them back into reality. Jeez, they're worshiping demagogues, man. I mean, who are you baptizing them in? in the name of the state? Or the name of Christ. You know, who's the control of your church? Is it Christ or the state? See, this they made that into a part of this incorporated. You must be incorporated and assimilated. It's the Borg. You know? Oh. A lot and of people wa new. waking up to Fukushima are waking up to all of these other connections. And it's a very, very tangled, complex situation. And people listening to this show, what can they do to help spread the word? How can we wake more people up? Well, I keep saying it over and over. Information is shock resistance. You know, they got a massive media arm. And, and we're just, the, you know, we're the alternative media. They get massive funding. We don't get any. You know, it's it's just like whoever will contribute you know, and be a part of this. I mean, this is foundational work for the White Road Watson if they're not catching it. But, uh, you know, we can actually do something to shut these things down, you know, take them out before they take us out. It, but it takes a conscious awakening. That doesn't happen unless there's people willing to sacrifice their lives. 
to, for, for this effort to, to get the information out. And that's what I've done. You know, I gave up it all years ago. El, we appreciate the fact that you work so hard to educate us and share and spread love and caring and concern. And we want to support you as much as possible. Check out his YouTube channel, Believers Underground, and read the links. Do your yes. own research. Yes, go through all the links, man. God gave you a brain. Okay. <laughs> I'm here to educate. Thank you so much for being on today. You're welcome back anytime. Bonus, sis. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs> See you guys Thursday.